I think David should open it up. And, uh, Come on, David. I want to confirm, too, that David is only 5'4". He lives with me. And um, he's not 6'6". Six, six, so take it away, David. Love it. Man, Gen Z. Um, uh, what God wants to do in Gen Z. Um, I think uh, my generation... Um, and I can speak for a lot of people in this chat, say amen if you agree. We've been through the, the conferences with the cool names. Uh, we've seen the preachers with the cool shoes and, the, you know, the one-liners like that rhyme. And everyone's like, amen, but forget it five minutes later. Um, and I think, there's, uh, I think that's good. I think it's done good stuff for, for God. Um, but my generation really just craves authenticity. Um, authenticity. So if you're older and you're wondering how to reach Gen Z, um, say, I agree in the chat if this is true. I've talked to a lot of people and this is, this is what they believe as well. We just want authenticity. Um, we don't really care if you've got cool shoes, if you can make one-liners. I've honestly, I don't remember one one-liner in a sermon. I was thinking about that yesterday. I, I can't remember one. But I do remember the sermons where the pastor, where the speaker was screaming, was screaming with passion, zeal, and wisdom, with authenticity. We've been, we've literally been spoon-fed, spoon-fed lies since we were so young. In our schools, being taught things that don't make sense, um, our generation craves just to be accepted. And the people who kind of wake up from this are like, this is, this is dumb. <laughs> like, we want the real thing. I don't want what I do not want want what makes me happy. We don't want what makes us happy. We want what's true. We're done with just we're literally so sick of just you know I just want to be accepted. Like no, I want the truth. And once we get the truth, we'll die for it. Um we really will. Um uh, that's something I've seen super prevalent in me and my friends and everyone who's following Jesus. So that's what I would say to the older generation about Gen Z. And I'm going to speak to Generation Z right now. Man, you guys are really passionate for Jesus. And it's, been, it's amazing. But there's two things you guys need to get under your belt. Um, if you want to run the race for a long time, you can sprint at the beginning of a race. But anyone who runs knows if you sprint super hard and, and you don't pace yourself, and you don't think about what's coming, you just want to be first right now, you will crash, all right? And this is a race. This is a good race. This is a fight of faith. So to Generation Z, find some trustworthy guys. Um, if you're a girl, find a trustworthy girl. And you need to be able to submit to their leadership. Um, I think we don't understand how much God desires honor. Like, God desires his children to be full of honor. And we need to honor the older generation. I know when I first became saved, I looked at the guys on stage saying, get off, old man, I want to speak. And that's disgusting. I'm going to call it out. That is disgusting. They've been running years before we even know Jesus. We mm -hmm. need to respect the older generation. I'm not saying that because my mentor's on here. I'm not saying that because Aaron's on here. I'm saying that because it's something I've actually learned. If you really actually want to run this race out, you need to learn honor. And you need to respect the people who have been running years before you. Respect and listen to them. And the other thing, and the last thing I'll say to my generation, to Gen Z, is to find the quiet place. Find a secret place. Guys, I, I am so young in my faith, but I'm learning from people who have run before me. And they always say, David, the one thing that I wish I could have held on longer, or the one thing I am so glad I did, Either they regret it or they super glad they did it was getting into the quiet place. David, what's a quiet place? It's getting alone with God without music in your ears, without, you know, all the fancy journaling in the Bible and making it all pretty just because it looks pretty. It's really being honest, getting gritty with God. Guys, you know, the armor of God, the armor of God, you know, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, you have all of it. You have one thing that's called the shield of faith. The shield of faith. What the Romans used to do, because that armor was based off of the Roman armor. This is going to be the last thing I'm going to say. What the Romans used to do, okay, their, their shields were made out of wood and leather, all right? 
um, and enemies used to shoot shoot arrows that were on fire to actually burn the shields. And so what Romans used to do before they would go into battle, they would wet their shield in water. Guys, the quiet place is wetting your shield. It's mm. getting ready for the flaming darts of the enemy. It's wetting your shield. It's going to the river and preparing you for battle. It's going saying, God, thank you. Thank you so much for making me whole. It's speaking truth of your life. You're not just asking God for favors, like getting a great grade on your math test. It's saying, God, thank you for dying for me. Guys, we love you. We honor you. Remember, three things. For the older generation, we want authenticity. Be authentic. We're so done with the cool names and the cool youth pastors. We just want authenticity. Okay? And for Generation Z, be honor. Honor your authority. Honor your authority. Bah, 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 bah. Honor your authority and get into the quiet place. That is pure gold. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you David, for releasing that. And even for the mothers and the grandmothers and the older generation watching this right now, the mothers and the fathers, like hearing this from someone who is Gen Z, let this be a sign to you that Gen Z is not hopeless, that there is a remnant. God is raising up a remnant in Gen Z to be lovesick followers of Jesus. And I believe David's a, a sign for that. So mm -hmm. even for the mothers and the fathers watching this, like, let this encourage your heart to keep praying, to keep believing, to keep um, fixing your eyes on Jesus for what he's about to do in this generation. And I love that we have Shane and Aaron on too because of um, Shane and Aaron both being fathers, both being um, people who have stood in the gap <laughs> for Gen Z. I feel like both of you guys in, in the face of statistics <laughs> that are stacked up against our generation you guys have believed the higher narrative so i'd love to hear what you guys are thinking and what you want to release to as fathers yeah i feel like i'm in full dad mode i'm in my office but i got a spit cloth right here for when i had my boy earlier but um you know i'll just go real quick <clears throat> and i want to build off what david was saying because what's cool about the armor of god is like he said it, it did apply to that time period and one thing that's cool is that the sword that we have, um, you know, the sword back in that day, it was actually, it wasn't a long sword. It was a shorter sword. And what would happen is if any of those arrows made it past the shield, they would actually use the sword to dig out the arrow from their body. You know, like, a, like when a barb goes in you, it, it's reversed, it's hooked. So you can't just pull it out. You'd have to dig it out. And so there's this idea that they would use their sword to dig out or uproot any arrows that made it past their shield. And so how does this apply? Well, we have our shield of faith and we're trusting in the Lord and we're leaning on him and his word. Well, those fiery darts that come from the enemy, they're accusations because the enemy is after one thing. He's after your faith. So wherever you're at today, I want you to know he's not after your body, your money, your family anything. The enemy is after your faith because everything you do is driven by your faith in God. You're, you're saved by grace through faith. Um, it's only because of our faith that we're even born again. And so the enemy knows that if he can get you to lay down your own armor because you stopped trusting in God, then you won't be effective and you'll be open to all of his attacks. So faith is the goal. Jesus said, you can do anything in my name if you believe okay so we have the great privilege of believing in god well sometimes we're, we're running this race we're fighting the good fight of faith we're trying our best to have faith in god and maybe some of those accusations from the enemy have come against you they passed your shield and they've hit your body well we take the sword of the spirit and we uproot the lies and accusations of the enemy from our life man i feel the power of the holy spirit right now someone is getting free right now because you need to know that when the enemy lies to you when he tells you a different identity when he tells you that god's not for you he's not with you he's never going to use you that you're a mistake whatever it is you uproot those lies with the truth of god's word and so that's why david is talking about the secret place that's when you get alone with god when no one else is looking 
for no motivation other than to just be with him. Jesus didn't pay for you to get to heaven. He paid for you to get restored back to the Father because access to God is what was lost in the garden because sin. Well, Jesus was the lamb who didn't just forgive sin, but John the Baptist said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus has removed our sin by his blood so we could pursue a relationship with our Father. And so to Gen Z, to, to millennials like me and Aaron, and to the older generation, to women, I want you to know that the world is trying to tell you so many things about your identity and about who God is and, and all of these things. Stay in the word. It's the only way to continually uproot all of the lies of the enemy that might make it past your shield of faith. So good. So good, Shane. Thank you. Aaron, do you have anything to add? Yeah, man, that's so good, guys. <laughs> I just want to say um, thank you to all the to the all the praying women on here. You are so needed. So needed. Um, you know, Gen Z, uh, David talked a little bit about what, what Gen Z is looking for. And I would say that one thing that maybe Gen Z hasn't realized that they're looking for yet, some of them have, but it is mothers and fathers that, that believe in them and contend in faith for them. So I just, I want to tell any mom, any dad, any grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever, don't stop, don't stop praying. Don't stop believing for a turnaround in whatever young person's life you're connected to. Seriously, don't give up. I want to. I want to. I want to share this because we're um we're we're doing this thing. One voice leads leads this initiative, this event called Gen Z for Jesus, and uh, we we named it Gen Z for Jesus because there is a burning passion in God's heart for Gen Z. And uh, there was this one day that I was that I was praying, and I was praying a lot of sad things. I was. I was praying like, oh, God, Gen Z so broken, so jacked up. Oh, God, the suicide rates are so terrible. They're gender confused. Like, oh, you know, and I was just like, you know, and there's a place to pour out your soul before the Lord like that. It's not wrong. Like, and we don't want to like stick our heads in the sand and not have a realistic understanding of what this generation is facing. So that's not what I'm saying. But God showed up in that moment and he touched me with his heart and I heard him thundering from his throne generation z is mine generation z is mine and i shook under the under the weight of god's presence and wept and wept because i realized my heart wasn't even connected to that cry of his wow. heart that Je that he wanted gen z as his own that the father wants gen z for his son and, uh, and, you know, I was, I was reminded, I want to share this Bible verse because I believe God is inviting mothers and fathers to carry his heart for Generation Z. You know, in Luke chapter 8, there's this story of a, of a man. His name's Jairus, and he has a 12-year-old girl that is dying. She's on her deathbed, all right? And Jairus comes, and he finds Jesus, grabs Jesus, says, my daughter is dying. Would you come, like, lay a hand on her, heal her? And of course, Jesus goes. So he starts heading towards Jairus's house. And there's this interruption of this moment where this woman with a flow of blood reaches out, touches Jesus's garment, right? You guys know this story. You know, it's a powerful story. Power goes out from Jesus. He says, who touched me? And the disciples are like, what are you even talking about? But at that same moment, this woman that pressed through the crowd to lay a hold of Jesus, at the same moment, messengers come from Jairus's house and they say, your daughter is dead, Jairus. It's over. Your daughter's dead. And here's what they say. They say this demonic phrase. They say, why bother the teacher any longer? They say, why bother the teacher any longer? And I feel like in the church, we've a little bit accepted the bad news about Gen Z. I know there were years as a youth pastor where I accepted the bad news about the next generation as if it was truth. And that day when I heard God thundering from his heart that Gen Z is mine, I realized, oh my gosh, I've got to connect to the storyline of heaven, of what God is saying and what God is wanting to do in Gen Z. And in Luke chapter eight, check this out. In this moment, when they say, why bother the teacher any longer? Jesus responds and he looks at Jairus and he says, don't be afraid, 
only believe. Don't mm. be afraid, only believe. And I want to tell you, moms and dads, if you have a prodigal child or you're, maybe you're a youth pastor or a praying mom, you're praying for young people and you see people going astray, I want to tell you, don't be afraid, only believe. Don't That's give good. up. And it was amazing because right after this woman presses through the crowd to lay hold of Jesus, God reveals his heart in that Jesus presses through the crowd and says, no, we're not giving up. We are going after this 12 year old girl. And I believe that's what Jesus is doing. And he shows up at the house and he says, uh, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. Right. You guys know this. You've heard, you've heard this story. And I believe the same thing over Gen Z right now. And, and a lot of Gen Z, like you've heard David, they are awake. They are alive. They are hungry. We've, you know, we don't went on tour this last year. Shane went and did a tour. We've been seeing in different cities, youth are, are rising up for Jesus. There is a hunger and a passion in Gen Z for Jesus. And so <clears throat> I just want to encourage any praying moms, any praying dads on here, I want you to see the eyes of Jesus looking at you saying, don't be afraid, only believe. And then for the Gen Zers watching, this amazing thing happens when Jesus gets to the house, there's all this weeping and commotion. And, and, uh, and it was a fake, it was a form of weeping. It was a practice that they did in, uh, in Israel in that day, they would gather professional mourners to mourn and so all these people were gathered around the house making all this commotion jesus has to put them all outside the house because anything that doesn't have a heart of faith anything because we know that faith in the atmosphere impacts you know uh even the level of the supernatural jesus puts them all out of the house because he only wants that which is aligned with his heart and who does he bring into the house? The mother, the father, and his three closest disciples. One of them happened to be maybe a 12-year-old, John, the beloved. Who knows how old he was? But John, the one I believe it was because of his youthfulness, he was able to become that disciple that was so connected to Jesus' heart that he laid his head on Jesus' chest. You know, I believe Jesus is wanting to give young 12-year-olds his heart for their generation, just like John the Beloved got to watch a 12-year-old girl of his generation get resurrected. You know, I believe Jesus is looking for the young ones and the old ones that are willing to believe with his heart, to not be afraid, but to believe and enter into God's heart for Gen Z. And so that's why we're doing this, uh, just to let you guys know, we're doing a stadium gathering called Gen Z for Jesus because we're wanting to release that declaration from the heart of God that Gen Z belongs to Jesus. And so we're gathering young and old alike, September 3rd. Um, maybe one of us will drop in the comments, the Gen Z for Jesus Instagram. You can go look it up, check it out, plug in, register. But we are gathering people from every generation. Like David said, we're not putting names on it. It's not about celebrity pastor personalities, or I mean, we love them, bless them, but that's not what this is about. This is about a moment that I believe is similar to that house moment where Jesus wants to take the fathers and the mothers and the young ones that have his heart to see a revival and a waking up in generation Z. And so we're gonna have that moment September 3rd in Frisco, Texas, um, just outside Dallas, Texas. You can check it out, Gen Z for Jesus. But I just, can I pray real quick for any moms and dads? I just want to pray for courage yes. in your yes. heart. And then maybe anything that Shane and David want to pray, or I don't know, maybe we've gone way too long, Bailey. I apologize if I went super long, but no, let's, uh, really good. <laughs> all right. I just want to pray. Hey, if you're a mom and a dad, I think my phone is low on service, so I'm not seeing comments or anything syncing up and it's the same, whatever. But I just, if, if that's you, if you're like, I have a prodigal or there's a young person I'm believing for that they've been going astray and young people, if there's friends in your high school that you know they need Jesus, just, just go ahead and say, that's me in the chat. Or maybe put, I believe in the chat. If you wanna agree, like Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. And we're just gonna pray that God would move in their lives and that God would give you faith, all right? So just drop that in the chat if that's you. And then, uh, and then just pray with me right now. And then Shane and David, anything you guys wanna throw in or pray or Bailey. But in the name of Jesus, 
God, I pray for every person watching this, even those that might watch this back later. God, I pray that you would give them faith. God, I pray you would give them your heart for Gen Z. I pray for the mothers and the fathers that have maybe grown weary, that are maybe watching the bad news. But I pray you would encourage their heart, Jesus, that they would see your eyes locked in with them saying, don't be afraid, only believe. God, I pray that you would visit the mothers and fathers watching this. And I pray for the young people, you would give them boldness, that they would be like that young John that's connected to your heart, that's so in love with you, that just wants to be close to you and that's ready to step in to see the miracle happen for their generation. So God, I just pray every praying mom, every praying dad, every grandma, grandfather, aunt, uncle, whoever, give them faith, give them faith and give them that, that, uh, that heart that you have for the, for the young ones they're believing for. And I pray for salvation to spring up from the ground. God, I pray that you would, you would save that you would draw prodigals home, that you would draw them back home in Jesus' name. And I pray that those watching this would not stop praying, that, that uh, even what David shared about the secret place, even what Shane talked about rooted in the word, God, we pray that these mothers and fathers that are standing in the gap, even the millennials and the young people that are standing in the gap for Gen Z, that they would not give up, they would not lose heart, they would stay rooted, they would not stop praying. And I pray, God, that you would keep them connected to your heart in Jesus' name. Yeah, Lord, I thank you for your heart for this generation. And I thank you, God, that we have the ability through the Holy Spirit and, and just by trusting in you to see the mountain of wrong ways of thinking and, and identity crisis completely removed from this generation. Lord, we tear down right now by faith every stronghold every wrong way of thinking that has exalted itself over Gen Z and even over the parents to believe that nothing can be done. Lord, I thank you that just by having faith, you said that we could do even greater works than you did. And so, Father, I pray that you would use us to reach literally hundreds of thousands and millions of youth and parents to, to be fully devoted to you. God, I pray that you would use us to inspire people to get alone with you, not to follow us and listen to us speak. I pray, God, that everything that we put out would provoke people to go get alone with God. And Lord, I thank you that um, we just come alongside the praying parents and, and we lift their arms up right now in faith and we say that we're with you and we're believing for, for change. And we thank you, God, for every parent that's prayed and we thank you, God, for every youth that's, that's crying out in their schools for their schools to be saved. God, I pray that you would, um, your presence would just be completely dwelling in every high school in America, that Jesus clubs would spring up in every high school, and that, Father, on September 3rd, we would gather in your name and see things shift in the Spirit, in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for this live. I thank you for mothers and fathers. God, that have not given up on our generation. Um, thank you for them, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you so much. Thank you so much for not giving up on us, God. Thank you, God. Give us a childlike faith, God. Give the mothers and fathers a childlike faith for my generation, God. Give the mothers and fathers a childlike faith. Give my generation a childlike faith, God. Thank you, Jesus for your love and grace and mercy. <laughs> Amen. And just Amen. before we end, I just really feel like there are specifically grandmothers watching this right now who have felt like they have no part in this, that they have no, no weight in the next generation in Gen Z. And I just want to uh, say as a testimony, I had a praying grandmother when I wanted nothing to do with Jesus. When I wanted nothing to do with God, I had a praying grandmother every day who would tell me about Jesus. Even when I would tell her, you're crazy. I want nothing to do with this. You're just a psycho granny who loves Jesus. Like, she didn't give up. She persisted. Um, and I feel like there are so many mothers and grandmothers who have been interceding and praying for years for their children and for their yeah. grandchildren. And I want you to know that now is the time for a great harvest. Amen. Don't give up.
just what Aaron said, keep believing. And what Shane said, don't let the enemy come after your faith. Like now is the time for salvation in children and in grandchildren. So you have a huge part in this. So we need you on September 3rd. We need you every day on the daily. We need the mothers and the fathers. So I just want to encourage you guys with that, that we need, we need you. We need the grandmothers. We need you guys. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jane, Bailey. Aaron, David, you guys are my heroes. Yep. Seriously. <laughs> we love you. Thank you guys. We love you so much. Thank you guys so much. Yes. <laughs> Register for Gen Z for Jesus .com, September 3rd. We want to see you there. So, Ooh. yes. Love you guys so much. See you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Bye. Bailey. You're amazing. See you.